It must be love, love, love. So I'm Barry Grint, this is uh, Alchemy Mastering and we're here today to do a half speed transfer of uh, Labby Sifri album. What I'm going to demonstrate now is the difference between a normal speed cut and a half speed cut. Uh, we can't play you the audio, uh, but you can see on the meters on the desk what the difference is. So at the moment I'm playing a normal speed cut of a, of a track and you can see, well at most it will get to about minus one in terms of the volume on the disc. So now we're going to play the half speed cut. Um, this is actually a picture disc which um, demonstrates that not all picture discs are, are bad. Um, so this was done at half speed and as you can see the meters on the desk are reading about 3 dBs um, higher than they were for the normal speed cut. And in terms of the audio, there's more weight on the bottom end, more definition around the kick drum, um, and, and it comes up into quite high into the mid range. So in this instance, there's a lead guitar and there's more weight on the bottom of the lead guitar as well. The advantage of half-speed mastering is that you get a better translation of the transient information and that gives the impression that the cut is louder. Um, so if you've got um, album sides where there's a duration imbalance between the two, um, you could take your long side and cut that at half speed and the shorter side cut that normal speed and then because of the volume gain that you get from half speed uh, you'll end up with uh, the best of both worlds for both sides. Um, the thing, I mean I know we're talking about half speed and the audio is playing at half speed but the finished product is at normal speed. You don't get a record that's playing really slowly. Um, so it, it does all work out in the end. In order to cut the record half speed or normal speed, um, we need to create two stereo signals coming out from the, from the cutting desk. So what we have here on the top stream is the program that's actually going to be cut onto the disc. And down here, we've got what's called a preview signal. So this lower signal is slightly in advance of what's actually going to be cut. Uh, and if you look here, you'll see that the audio will start here slightly before the other channel. And so the two signals come out and come over onto the lathe here. Um, one signal is just going down into the electronics at the bottom of the lathe. The other signal comes round and into the cutting amplifiers. So there's one for the left channel and one for the right channel and then the signal from those comes back round and into the cutter head assembly at the back and then through onto this loom and into the cutter head. So with the cutter head we have two solenoids mounted at 45 degrees. These white rods here they're the pistons of the solenoid they're connected onto the end of this bar that has a flexible coupling and it is the action of the pistons going in and out that will wiggle the stylus which is on the end here and, and that makes the, the grooves wiggle. Um, there's two terminals here with wire and the wire is wrapped around the stylus and the currents pass through and that just heats the stylus a little bit so it's like a hot knife through butter and that helps to just keep the noise down of, of the cut, otherwise you'd have a lot of surface noise. Um, and then on the front, there's a little aperture here, and we pass helium uh, into the cutter head chamber here. Uh, because these pistons can be going backwards and forwards at 16,000 times a second, um, friction can build up, heat can build up, um, and so helium, being inert, uh, we pass that through and it just keeps a constant fresh uh, freshening of the air in the chamber so that the heat doesn't build up and melt the coils. That's the cutter head. Yeah.